Boom! What's going on, everyone? I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Steel, founder of Advantage Diecast, welcoming you to the warehouse on another episode of Toy Talk. Red Star Express Lines was started in 1932 in Auburn, New York. It was moved to Newark, New Jersey to escape the high taxes along with many other companies in Auburn. In 1987, Red Star was sold off to TNT of Sydney, Australia, joining the largest transportation network in the world. Red Star continued to be a profitable holding of TNT under the name TNT Red Star. In 1992, TNT spun off its U.S. divisions to TNT Holdings Company, and it was headquartered in Rosemont, Illinois. In an effort to distance themselves from their former Australian parent company, TNT rebranded themselves as U.S. Freightways Corp. in 1996. At this time, the TNT initials were taken down and they were replaced by USF initials. This was to help avoid confusion on all the trucking divisions, including Red Star. In 2004, USF closed down USF Red Star division due to lost customers, lost revenue, and a union strike that made profitable operation just unattainable for the company. Paying tribute to this fallen flag in a 164 scale truck, which is really an older fallen flag than most people would think, since its name change in 1987 effectively wiped out the original company. DCP by First Gear released a 164 scale diecast Mac B61 with a 40 foot reefer trailer for Red Star Express Temperature Control Division. This is DCP by First Gear's Mac B61 tandem axle day cab with 40 foot refrigerated trailer for Red Star Express lines. It comes in a DCP by First Gear box, but this is not the standard box. This is a smaller box than they're used to, and it has a two piece blister. As you can see, this box is a little bit smaller because this was actually based on making for the um, vintage trucks that, which had shorter trailers and small, the cab overs. Back says, open road sold separately, built on tradition, powered by precision. Great slogan for DCP. Now we'll turn him up so you can see the item number. It is 60-0571. Also, in pretty n nice note, this one is the best. The date of manufacture is actually stamped into the cardboard. Now we'll go on and open this guy up so that we can look at the trailer inside. This is the not really DCP toolings. These are both the cab and the trailer were first gear toolings, but they They've since decided to brand all the 64 scale to DCP by First Gear. You can see the similar DCP mural in the back and road on the bottom. It's a two-piece blister, and it is taped, but I've already taken care of the tape so that we can get this open easily. Maybe. <laughs> Sometimes they get stuck. Now we'll pull that out. Set the trailer aside, and then we'll set the tractor aside. All right, we'll set that trailer truck back a little bit and pick up the trailer. Because you know me, I always start with the trailers. This is their the first gear 40-foot trailer, which I have no idea where they got the height. The design is pretty nice. They probably should have, with this design, gone with a 35-foot, but they went with a 40 However, I have no idea why they made it so short. That's a real short height trailer. It should have been taller. But anyway, that's the way they made it. It's a die-cast trailer. It's got uh, 
soft rubber tires sitting on uh, six spoke Dayton wheels. These are the Max style wheels. It has beautiful, beautiful tampoed graphics of the Red Star Express lines, temperature controlled division from the tropics to the pole. And then you got the tropics there and the polar over there. Really cool. The graphics are great. It has soft rubber tires here with a really nice vintage tread pattern, more of a bias ply pattern, so that they're different. Also underneath, you can see the fuel tank, and it's got the spare tire carrier with a spare tire in it, and the spare tire is just on the rim. It doesn't have the spokes, so this is a very more accurate spare tire than what's all been on all the others. It's got a kingpin, which is set up for DCP first gear, and there's the date tampoed onto it. 102nd day of 19. So 102.19 of the 102nd day of 2019. Now the base of this trailer is actually plastic, so it's the landing gear, unlike the DCP, which is all die cast. It has little air brake canisters and spring suspension on the axles. There are no actual working suspension, though it's fixed but that's okay be honest with you that working suspension i don't particularly like because the trailers have a tendency to sag one side or the other because of the weight of the trailers it's got marker lights front and rear just like they should have around to the back it's got red star express lines a drive safely and caution air brakes which is pretty cool you got your brake lights here and your rear bumper then you can see the black mud flaps. Uh, there's a trailer number of 38, of 3488 there, and there are no opening doors. But you can see how short this trailer is. It should have been about that tall. I don't know where they came up with this. But there's the hinges and the roof, and the, uh, the hinges there, and then you've got your uh, locks, cam locks and latches there for the doors. But the doors do not open on this guy. Roof uh, clearance lights are right there, outside and three inside. Round to the passenger side. Looks just like the driver's side, only it has nothing different. It's a mirrored image the, there in the front and the back instead of the other way around. Now the landing gear, you can see it has the like they did back in the day, they used steel wheels on the landing gear. I guess the idea was you could maybe roll the trailer with the sitting down. I don't know. But it's got those. They do not go up or down. They're fixed in that position that's almost all the way up. So that they'll roll fine, but if you set it down, it's, it's going to droop a little bit. But oh well. The roof of the trailer is just painted silver. Same as the sides. Round to the front, and it's got the Thermo King reefer on the front of the trailer because this is the refrigerated version. It's red with a black grill area on it. Pretty nice. Now let's set this trailer aside and look at the truck. And you can see it kind of droops because the landing gear doesn't come down. Oh well. Most of the time we have them hitched to track, so it doesn't matter. Now let's bring this guy up. This is First Gear's Mac B61 tooling. It's on a tandem axle configuration, and they've got it set up as a day cab. It's got chrome mirrors, chrome grill, and chrome bulldog hood ornament, which is a pretty nice rendition of the bulldog, but I think Neo did a little better, but that's okay. It's still a very nice bulldog. The turn signals are cast in, but they're painted orange. And then you got your black fenders and your red body. The frame is black. Your wheels are black. Your wheels are red with silver center caps and silver rings. And they're the six spoke, which is traditional of Mac front and rear. And then you can see the bias ply tread pattern tire, which is pretty nice on this truck. Um, probably could have done a little better on that wheel, but it's still a very nice wheel. It, looks actually probably better than the, the re DCP spider. It's got the fuel tank here with the steps in it and the fuel cap on it, battery box there, chrome quarter fender and mud flaps. 
Also, the door handle and the grab bar are silver. They're little tampos. So is the Mac B61, Thermodyne, and the little Mac Bulldogs and detail that goes along the hood. It's all tampoed in silver. The hood straps for the butterfly hood are there, but they are not painted black. They are just painted um, body red. There's also a little vent door there. Isn't that pretty cool? Inside, it's got a uh, bench seat that's black, black door panels, black dashboard, and black steering wheel. It's got the little wind wing mirror, but no actual passenger or driver's door mirror. Yeah. The front window over here, it is a two-piece window, but it's just one piece. It's hard plastic. You see the windshield wipers are tampoed in silver on it, and then it's got a little black ring with a black center bar that's just tampoed onto the thing. You can see the uh, Mac style grill right there, which looks really nice. Individual jewel style headlights. The lower little driving lights are just tampoed in silver. And you can see the two turn signals there. It also does say Mac right there on the front of the grill. Hard to read. Maybe it'll focus. Probably won't. Nope. But there it is. It's got a black bumper on the front. And then we'll turn them around this way, and you can see very much the same details. Only add on the air cleaner over here. You see the ICC number, other no NYSPC numbers, and then the Red Star logo. Really cool. Quarter fender, mud flaps, six spoke wheels, and then you got this very, very nice Mac style muffler, which is the comes out and it's got a great big diameter muffler that goes up and then turns out with a tailpipe right above the cab it's kind of short but it it looks really cool and it's so typical of mac and then you got your chrome mirror there around to the back just one brake light so classic of mac back in the day in that time period one brake light tampoed in red Two black mud flaps, fifth wheel that does DCP and first gear trailers, along with anybody else with straight kingpin trailers. And then there's a little chrome diamond plate deck plate there. You can also see right through that frame. Pretty nice. We'll go underneath next. You can see the big Mac style differentials there. The suspension back here. I don't see any air brake canisters on it. Sometimes they have to leave parts off. Transmission detail, and then the drive shaft to the first axle, and then above the axles, which is the way they did. Instead of going into the axle, they went above and then came down with gears. There's another drive shaft connecting the rear axle, so it's both powered. Front spring suspension and axle is cast in. No steering on this one of any kind. It's fixed straight, but that is okay. This truck will actually roll straight. These tires don't have the same black shine to them that the other tires do, so these actually look more realistic to me. You see the bottom of the fuel tanks, and you can see the tailpipe, or the exhaust pipe going into the muffler. There's also an air tank right there. Very, very nice. Up to the top, you see the two battery boxes. You can see the deck plate. The roof lights are cast into the cab. Then they're tampoed orange on the f lenses and then silver on the back. And then so classic of Mac was the uh, two bell chime air horn that was only on top of the driver's side of the truck instead of sp split across. Really, really cool. Now let's go on and hook this guy up so you can see what she looks like all hitched together. Boom. Now it's a little shorter than the Morse because B models are short cabs and that's only a 40 foot trailer. I just wish it was a little bit taller, maybe about that much taller and it would look great. Using the first, I just still can't figure out where they came up with that short trailer. But anyway, that is DCP by First Gears Mac B61 tandem axle day cab pulling a 40 foot refrigerated trailer for Red Star Express Lines, their temperature control division. Wow, 
I'm so glad to get these fallen flags made on today's modern detailed models. You can get many of the fallen flags that DCP has made on my website at farmtoysandmore.com. And I've also made a report, well, it's more of a booklet, containing pictures and descriptions of the entire First Gear Fallen Flag series. So go on and grab a copy of it at the link in the description below. And every time they add a new truck to the series, I update it. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below on what you liked or what you didn't like about the video. And I just know that you've got some friends out there that would enjoy this video, so go on and give it a share with the share button. Please be sure to hit the thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video and make sure you tap the subscribe button and join my YouTube family. I really appreciate each and every member of my YouTube family. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Steel, and I'll be back in the warehouse soon for another episode of Toy Talk.